I investigated the most obese city in America. Fat people. Over 40% of America is obese. Putting almost- Really? 71.6% of adults age 20 and over are overweight in the United States, but not, not necessarily obese. 40% of American adults age 20 and over are obese. That is insane. One of every two Americans at extreme risk of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, and death. But I wondered why are Americans getting so fat? So I- Cause our food is awful. Dude, our food is terrible. We instill terrible values for people on what they should eat. And then even the good things that aren't that bad that you eat have so many chemicals and so many other whack in it that it's awful. Bad portion sizes, bad food, everything's processed, everything's terrible because you're allowed, they allow companies to put whatever the f they want in the god food. I drove to McAllen, Texas, the fattest city in America, six years in a row, to see if I could find any answers, but the first- The fattest city in America, McAllen, Texas. First, I needed some breakfast. What a burger. What How do they determine the fattest city in America? Do they just walk around and they're like, yeah, there's a lot of overweight people? Or are they like polling like obesity rates? People usually get for breakfast here. Uh, number 21. Okay. So people usually get this for breakfast. Yeah, it's very popular. 980 yeah. calories. Really? Yeah. All right, McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, the guy in front of us is a pretty big dude. What did the last guy get? I'll get whatever he got. He got a bacon, egg, and cheese and a Thank you. A bacon, egg, and cheese and a Dr. P. Dude, I love the bacon, egg, and cheese from McDonald's. Not with a soda this meal it's probably a thousand breakfast number three menu's looking fattening I like to try the load of breakfast is that what a lot of people get yeah all right breakfast for real after scarfing down a fattening thousand calorie plus breakfast an average american might eat on their way to work i wonder God, if that shit looks so good though bro <laughs> like i'm getting why yo i'm getting why america's obese but like fuck dude that shit tastes dude and soda tastes so good dude Oh my God. Local restaurants here were any healthier. What do people typically get here for breakfast? Dave's, Dave's breakfast. Two eggs. Dave's pancakes. breakfast? Yo quiero uno, por favor. Syrup. Pancakes. Ah. Si, un Syrup. poquito. That's si. not even that much. Like, I would eat more than that for breakfast. See, si, see. Si. It's a big old breakfast. Ew, that fucking pie, though. Mmm, my God. It's like a fried bomb of goodness. We got pancakes, sausage, bacon, eggs. This? And that my guess is probably 3,000 calories right here, bro. Shut up. You're an idiot. I'm, yo, I'm yo, bro. I, yo, I, I'm too mean on Tyler. I love Tyler, bro, because I actually think he makes good videos now. But like that shit ain't 3k calories, bro. 3,000 calories. It's like mate, like that might be like 500. The rest of that shit maybe 500 as well. That's maybe a thousand calories, maybe. Caramel. That's <laughs> wild. With the local restaurant's breakfast here no better than the fast food, I went to the nearby mall to ask the locals here why all the food down here is so fattening, but I found this instead. I'm not sure who's renting these, but you have giant scooters, so you gotta be lazy as hell to not even walk. All right, I'm renting one. $39? How long do I get to use that shit? $39 as long as you need today. Bro, you gotta pay 40 bucks. Yo, you're out of your goddamn mind. I could buy an I could buy half of a fucking video game with that. You're you're really gonna spend 40 bucks so you don't have to walk in a mall? Walk. Alright, I'm renting one. Bro, I cannot believe this is real. Let's interview the locals. Do a lot of people rent these scoozers at the mall? Yeah. Yeah? Is this like a McAllen specific thing? Uh yeah. I, I do feel like Nikocado Avocado right now, I'll be honest. Cruising on a scoozer built to help morbidly obese people move around the mall. I thought now, I that was is sad though. Like seeing like like when you're walking in a grocery store and it's not like somebody that like broke their leg, it's just like they're using a mobility scooter because they're so overweight. Like I feel bad. But it's like 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 nobody's helping them. I was in Wally first. And second. I understand it's there it's it's in part in part their fault too, right? But it's also like society's enabling them the United States enables people being overweight. It like by having that shit. Like, by, by, by being like, oh, yeah, here's a mobility scooter so you can go buy seven more liters of Coca-Cola and fucking five bags of Oreos instead of actually having to fucking get up and, like, lose weight and then be able to fucking buy things and, and like, live a regular life. We're going we're gonna to enable you being 
overweight so you can get more overweight and then we make money off of it but the question was do you know why mcallen's the we tell people it's okay to be fat when it's not dude it's it's not okay to be obese right it's okay to not you shouldn't be insecure if you're fat that's the issue making fun of people for being fat rather than saying hey and nicely being like hey trying to help them lose weight right Fat phobia is when people are on social media and they're just fat and you just make fun of them for being fat. Like, that's fucked, right? Like, but sitting there and then being like, oh, yeah, no, it's perfectly fine. You weigh 450 pounds and you're 5'5". Five five. Like, that's not okay, right? That's not like sitting there and being like, oh, yeah, no, that's not a health risk. Like, that is a health risk. Joe's going to get canceled for this? Dude, I'm not. I'm, I, in my opinion, I'm speaking facts. Being overweight is not something you should be insecure about, but if you're morbidly obese, you should, you should care about losing weight for your own health. It's unsafe to be at that weight. It's not, I, I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, you should be insecure. Oh my God, I look bad. The reason you should look, lose weight isn't because you look bad. The reason you should lose weight is because, oh my God, this is going to give me heart disease. Obesity capital? Uh, the food, okay. and they don't walk. Why are people so big? Uh, people like to eat junk food, like chips or McDonald's. Well, like, I think another issue with fat phobia is too, is like when some, you know when somebody's like lightly overweight, like they got a dad bod, and people are grilling them for being fat. Like that ain't, that, that ain't fat, right? Like if you, if you got a friend and he got like some chub on him, like who gives a fuck, right? Like you're perfectly healthy. You're slightly overweight. That ain't a problem. Right. I have a lot of friends that are slightly overweight. Who gives a fuck? Like I like I in all honesty, I would not describe that as fat. The point of where I would call somebody fat is when they're getting to the point where it's affecting their health. That's fat. And I know I know a lot of people don't like using the word fat because that makes them feel bad. I could yeah, say overweight instead. And you're right on that. But it's also just like it's enabling people being OK and not changing the fact that they're killing themselves. Yeah, do you have any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, All right, let's hear it. What's your name? David. David, how you doing, David? Good, I'm a children's book author, actually. Okay, tell me about it. What's going on? Can I have you get recorded? Um, un momento, por favor. It's to help the nation. Like, why you want a goddamn fucking segue? Security, but... No recording. No recording. Okay, Paul Blart. Shit. You want to go outside? Yeah, man. You want to hop on here? All right, tell me about yourself. What's going on? So, yeah, I lost a brother and sister to diabetes. Okay. And so, yeah, so you know, I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes as well. And so that inspired me to write a children's book okay. that encourages kids to eat healthy and exercise. The book is called The Adventures of Exo and Sci, like exercise. I like that. It, it, it's, it's part of the problem in, in what parents do, right? If, you're, if your kid's overweight and they're under the age of, like, 10, it's the parent's fault. Right. Because when you're six, if your kid's obese, it's the parents' fault, right? Because the kid's not choosing what to eat. The parents are giving the kids food. It's their fault. The parents are enabling it. And then after that, they also caused that person to be overweight because their entire life, they've been feeding them that way. They're used to it. They're acting that way. They're used to eating that way. They're always going to be that way just because that's what they've grown up and that's what they've always known. If you instill healthy behaviors when someone's a kid, they will transition those healthy behaviors into later in life. It's like a cascading thing. And uh, so Excellence, I live in a town called OB City, like obesity, where the mayor is Diane Beatties or diabetes. I'm trying to do my part to get people to change the way they eat. Do you have any places maybe you could show us around? <laughs> Yo, this fucking jerk off. Oh my God, dude. Just tell them to leave and fucking go the other way. They ain't gonna fire your dumb ass if they're recording. Here, yeah. McAllen? Of course, yeah. Yeah? yeah? I'd love to. Yeah, you're a blessing. <laughs> no, you guys seriously are a blessing, man. Right on. <laughs> Yo, he mad as hell, though. What's around here, McAllen? Of course, yeah. Yeah? yeah I'd love to. Yeah, you're a blessing. <laughs> no, you guys seriously are a blessing, man. Right on. So, David agreed to show me some of the reasons and places. Why is he on a Segway? Like, like, why are you on a Segway? Making the people of McAllen so fat. 
Okay, so from birth to adulthood, why are people getting fat out here? It's the food, it's the Mexican culture. It's like at the start of every good Mexican dish is a good handful of lard. I'm not, I'm not sure. joking with that. Yes. Refried beans, rice, tortillas. Saturated then- fat is a big thing. Um, I, I think that's a main problem in, in, in heart disease and in just obesity. Even if you eat right, even if you're not overweight, you probably eat more saturated fat than you're supposed to. And that builds uh, like artery blockage. And then you, you could die from that. I mean, way later in life. Like, you're so young right now, it probably doesn't even matter, but. And you got that mentality where, you know, you have to finish everything on your plate. Yeah. This is, see, see right here, this is, you can see all those pastries right there. And We got a ton of pastries here. Yeah. This is a diabetes speed run, right? Oh, yeah. Look at that right there. This place truly is obese, obese. Like, uh, over 40% of the population down here in the Rio Grande Valley is either diabetic or pre-diabetic. Look at that. Let's see the tacos here. Let's see the tacos. Someone might eat for lunch here. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at the calories. God damn. How you doing? It's also like, from a personal level, if you if you have a friend that's just like really obese and say they're gaining weight, you can't just tell your friend, hey, you're getting fat. Like, there's no nice way to tell your friend that they need to lose weight, right? Because sometimes you won't notice, or sometimes you just don't care, and people don't think others care. It's just like, and I, 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 I think it is a problem on social media when people are fat phobic, but it's also just very hard to approach somebody nicely and say, hey, you need to lose weight. It's, it's really hard to do that. Yes, what's up? Oh, we're filming a documentary about obesity in America, and we're showcasing the tacos here as a prime facilitator of obesity and, in turn, premature death. We'll be quick. Uh, the beef fajita taco has close to a thousand calories right there. A Got thousand it. calories? We made it to a panaderia. Panaderia, they just serve a lot of uh, Mexican uh, bakery goods. And you'll notice one thing, too. No calorie count out here. EBT the snap also. Yeah, that's a W, Tyler, but though. So you can imagine, you know, the government's allowing people to come and use food stamps they to come and- They accept EBT here. Yeah. The government is funding diabetes and obesity. Are you ordering here? Um, what are you getting? Por concha, un... tu concha. Tenemos un investigación diabetes in Michalem. I have diabetes, but I, I Tú tienes diabetes? My daughter and my grandson sí. want concha there. Sí. She has diabetes and she's buying the product. Yeah, she's buying, she's buying it, I think, for her daughter, her granddaughter. Yeah. I doubt it. She's probably going to have a snack of that, too, right? Yeah, maybe. Where should we head to next? Maybe a taco. Yo, Tyler be a blunt as fuck. Yeah, she's probably going to eat that shit, too. I mean, dude, that's literally just, oh, I'm buying it for my grandkids. That's bad, right? Like, e- 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 fucking unhealthy food isn't always bad, right? It's good to have unhealthy food. Like, in the summer, you can have ice cream, right? I used to eat ice cream every fucking day when I was like 12, 13, and back then it didn't really affect me. But now I realize that that's bad, right? Like, I'll have ice cream once a week. That's good. That's fine, right? But having ice cream every day, bad. Having candy every day, bad. Having a fucking slice of cake every day, bad. Okay. Vamos. People just don't care about eating healthy. Taco. Every variation of taco imaginable. I'll try one un birria. Gracias. All right. Excesso calorias, excesso azucares. Yeah, that's nice. Ah, that hits. Big old bite. Yep. I gotta say, I am mind blown because it's so tasty, but I know for a fact this is like a thousand calorie nuke. And after experiencing this fattening food firsthand, David invited me to his house to show me the reason he's so passionate about all this. But as an experiment, I wanted to see if I could snag food at the drive-thru in less than 60 seconds on my way over there, proving that fast food is too easy to get your hands on, thus making America fat. Just to show you how dangerously quick fast food is, I want to see if I can get my fast food order before I share with you this video sponsor. I do always wonder, though, how, how, um... How much one would have to eat to maintain a very high weight like that? Like, how many calories do y'all eat a day? If you know, or guess. I would say I eat probably around 3,000. Probably three, 3,000 or so. The average American is supposed to eat around 2,500, but that's also, like, depending on how much you how much you weigh, how tall you are. What I'm saying, though, is, like, the more and more you weigh, the more you have to eat to maintain that weight right? That's just the the premise of bulking. Right now, I weigh 181. Uh, I've gained like six pounds. I've gotten my weight back, right? 
If I weighed 200, to maintain my weight, I would have to eat more than I eat now. If I weighed 400, I would have to eat more and more and more to maintain that weight. So when you pass someone that's like 500 pounds, I, I'm, I wonder how, how much they even eat to maintain that weight. Great shadow like Saturated fats. Ooh, a raid ad. Skipping. After proving food is too accessible in America, I had made it to David's house so he could show me why he's so passionate about destroying obesity. Started uh, doing it for these two people right here. That's my brother and sister, uh, Mary and Henry, who, who passed away yeah. from diabetes. So um, I don't want anybody to have to go through what my family's had to go through, losing yeah. a brother and a sister, having another sister go blind. It, it's a really tough thing to see with the people that you love most. Eat healthy, exercise, and, and good things are going to happen. Okay, America has hope. America does have hope. After seeing obesity kill David's family, I flew to Florida to meet a guy named Mark who was on TLC's My 600 Pound Life and weighed over 700 pounds. Wow. At the end of the show, he lost 200 pounds and the doctor told him the only only way he could lose more weight was to get a stomach reduction surgery. We're in Orlando, Florida. We're meeting up with Mark. See what a day in his life looks like. Right now he's 487 pounds. We're gonna see what got him here and what advice he might have for others. Yeah, how you doing? So your name's Mark. I Mark, mean, he looks sir. way better. You were on the show, My 600 Pound Life on TLC. Right. Also, when people lose that much weight, a lot of the time they still weigh a lot just because of excess skin. Like, I used to watch those shows where they were weigh they would weigh 700 pounds and they would lose, like, 300. They have, like, 80 pounds of skin that they have to get removed. It, like, it's not fat. It's just extra skin because they've shrunk so much. And he says, hey, now you're at the point where we want you to do the weight reduction surgery, right? Yeah, I did everything the doctor asked. I lost weight. And he's like, okay, cool. You're approved for surgery. It's like, well, hold up. I'm kind of feeling this right now. Let me let me do this. He's like, okay, we'll go again. Go lose another 50 pounds. And I lost like 40 pounds. You know, it's like, okay, cool. Great job. Let's go get, let's get you in the surgery. And the surgery is a stomach reduction surgery? Yeah, they cut your stomach. Okay. He said, I have a 5% chance with the surgery and a 0% chance without. Okay. And I knew that my work ethic alone is going to eliminate that 5% gap. So sure. you. When did the weight get put on? The pandemic broke me. Okay. And this is where everything goes to shit. This is it, man. Okay. Let's walk through. That's cool. You lose your job and you're gaining a bunch of weight. Okay? My life consisted of here to there, to the bathroom, to my chair, out here, to the front door. Are you just locked in here depressed? I'm pretty much just locked in here depressed. This is my world. For me to go all the way, all the way to the other side of this little baby pool right Yeah. Here. And another issue is your metabolism. When you're young, like, like, a lot of y'all probably eat, like, an entire box of Eggo waffles in one sitting. And it ain't affect you at all. Like, like, I, yeah. It's your fat, your your body just digests shit, right? You'll just sit there and, and mac a whole pizza and be perfectly fine, right? And you won't feel heartburn. You could go and fucking, you could go and run a mile. When you're 40 and you have the same eating habits that you had when you were younger, you're just going to get fucking, you're going to gain weight like fucking nothing. Because you're eating the same as when you were 20, but now you're 40 and your body's slower you, you don't work out as much. You're not as active as you were. You're eating the same as you were when you were fucking growing. Now you're not. And so it's just going to get worse. Fucking killed me. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So this is the graveyard of bad memories right here. This couch. This is where life was for a long time. Yeah, I used to be an athlete, man. Yeah. Like, I could do the splits now. Can I see God damn. But I wanted to understand how Mark got to 700 pounds in the first place. Can we pull up DoorDash? This is the COVID depression menu. You got McDonald's, 7-Eleven, McDonald's. McDonald's. Two sauces. Sausage biscuit, two sausage McMuffin, sure. hash brown, Dr. Pepper. Biscuit, two sausage McMuffin, sure. hash brown, Dr. Pepper. That's breakfast. Wendy's, Baconator, then a Baconator combo. You get, the you get two of them. Little Caesars. Two Baconators. Dude, one Baconator puts me on my ass. One bacon, dude, one Baconator fries in a large, in a large Dr. P, dude. I'll fucking knack that Baconator and I have to take a nap. I have to take a nap. I have to fall asleep. Why are you drooling? Because that shit's good as fuck. Pizza. And this is all in the same day. Yeah. So as soon as they contacted the me back. And it's all just saturated fat because it's, it's ground beef, cheese, and bread.
well, bread's carbs, but it's fucking, it's, it's just ground beef cheese, ground beef cheese, cheese, bread, pepperoni, even more processed meats. You know, I was like, all right, it's, it's time to go to work. Got it. Going to work at the time was literally me. One. Basically, Mark is saying that when my 600 pound life asked him to be on the show, he knew he had to get healthy or he was gonna die. I get up and I put on my shoes, socks, head out the door, I go to the gym. This is my breakfast right here. I'm not trying to lose 50 pounds to look good on a vacation. I'm fighting for my life. You tell somebody laying in the hospital bed that if you work hard, you're determined, and you stay consistent, you can change your Where life. Where are trans fats found? Uh, a lot of pastries. Trans fats won't leave your body for a while. That is another problem. Problem. There are trans fats in like avocado, I think, but it's like different. Like there's natural trans fats, but it's so little. But like cin Cinnabon has a lot of trans fats. Like you eat Cinnabon, you just ate three grams of trans fats. You're not going to lose that for fucking 10 years. Uh, and it's like little, like it's not a lot. But like if you're eating like pastries and shit that has like stuff that is supposed to be solidified at room temperature, um, They'll put trans fats in those foods. So they so they maintain that way. I guarantee you every single person would stand up and fight to do that. So I went to the gym with Mark to experience an average day in his fight to become healthy again. Drove by eight times, took me the ninth time to come in. Let's go, Mark. Prove this one. Holy I'm gonna pass it. Gassed after Mark's workout, I had a lot more sympathy for what he goes through on a daily basis. And as Mark, working out in a bolo. Mark and I drove back to his parents' house, Mark did something he thought he'd never be able to do again. So, oh, sh What's up? I don't think. Oh, seatbelt? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna fit on me, though. Six minute drive. Okay. <laughs> I haven't worn a seatbelt in years, bro. Actually? For real, yeah. All right. For real. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> I kind of feel almost normal. Hell yeah, man. Don't give up, man. With the click of Mark's seatbelt echoing in my ears, I realized that if a 700-pound man can turn his life around, then so can America. That was actually a W vid, dude. That was a W fucking vid. W Mark, too, bro. Losing the weight. Like, I, Mark is such an inspiration. Losing weight is such a huge mental challenge. It is. It, it's, dude, it's the same thing. It's, it's like a food addiction to a degree. It's the same thing as, like, getting over, like, alcohol or nicotine or something like that. Like, it's... It's not easy to do. Dude, even in my own, even in my own shit, like everybody has something that like they can't give up, right? Uh, and like for some people, it's hard, it's hard to change their dieting, especially if they've grown up that way.